Hi, it's T with T Quilt, and we're here to work on month five of the Quilters Patch Sew Along. In month five, after we're completed, we will have ten blocks done. And for month five, it's saying that we need to do the Dahlia block on page 36 and the Honeysuckle block on page 42. I know I got some glare in here, so I'm very sorry about that. My other work area is filled with card making stuff because I'm making Christmas cards and Christmas gifts with paper crafting. So I have to use my long arm area. Here's the Dahlia block and you can see where you have your instructions for things that you need. But the one thing about the Dahlia block is that it is English paper piecing which means it has a hexagon that goes with it and so here in the book they're telling you that you need a 3 4 inch hexagon template to make this and then they also give you the template without the seam allowance as well so making the English paper piecing portion of this block is a whole video unto itself so what I'm going to do is make another video where I show you how I make my seeds and I am just going to go ahead and show you some that I have already made and from these I will be selecting three to put in my block now I think mine are going to be a little bit bigger than what's required in the block but I'm just going to make some adjustments for that so then the next thing that I need to do is cut my background and my green fabrics so what I need to actually cut then is to cut my background fabrics and my fabrics for my leaves and stems so I will do that and I will come back I'm back with all of my pieces cut out. I have everything here except for the actual hexagon flowers. So I will just go ahead and start piecing this together. Again, this is very straightforward piecing. I have everything laid out in order. The only thing that's not in order is the squares that I'm going to need to do for my flip corners. So I will go sew this and I will come back. I'm back with my completed block and I have pressed everything nice and flat and now I am going to add my hexi flowers I did not show how to piece these units together you can see that in another video that I plan to upload at some point but I'm going to just go ahead and do this particular block so I have some flowers that are a pretty good size and if I'm putting the center point down there will be some overlapping which also occurs with flowers and then if you notice how close this is to the outer edge on each side if I'm centering on my stem so you have options here you can not stitch this part down and then when you sew your block together you would have room to stitch your block together when we go to set the quilt and then you can hand finish this part or I got some other ones in different size that I can use so I'm just going to put three out here I'm not sure yet which ones I'm going to use so I want this one to be the highest this one in the medium and this one really comes down so if I use this size it's perfect for the quilt block so I think that's what I'll do just so I can get it all done but I have this very strong stripe so I may change that out for something else not quite sure 
maybe I need a little bit more color so I would do something like that and then how I would stitch this down is I would make sure that I have the center connection of my block down and then I would just put a little dab of glue with the glue stick to temporarily hold this in place I don't want to put it under my flower pieces because I still have to pull those out yet so I will hand sew this down and then this block will be complete but for right now since I'm actually videotaping I am actually going to keep my flowers and then I'm going to stitch this by hand later on because I need to start working on the next block it's the honeysuckle block and it's actually made with all 60 degree triangles it looked like so they have a template that you can use to cut your pieces out I am going to use my 60 degree triangle ruler so I need to find the template and then I will measure the template so in the book here it's giving me my 60 degree triangle template so I'm just going to measure that and then I'm going to just cut 60 degree triangles from strip sets so I am just going to go pick some fabrics and then start cutting 60 degree triangles I'm back and I've just cut the majority of the pieces I'm sure that I may need some more triangles but as I was laying this out onto my board I don't have room to completely lay this out so I am just going to go ahead and start sewing these pieces together so again I just used strip sets here and then I just used my 60 degree ruler here and it's a clear view triangle ruler by Sarah nephew is the one that I used and I cut my triangles out of strip sets and then when I got to my end pieces they have you put an extra triangle and then you just trim the block up afterwards I don't like to do that I like to go ahead and just cut the end pieces so that they fit if you want to cut the end pieces so that they fit you just add 3 8 of an inch to what you're already cutting and then you cut that in half and you'll end up with two end pieces so I cut eight triangles that were three eighths of an inch larger and then cut them in half and then that gave me enough to do all of my edges on the block so I'm going to go sew this together and I will come back with the completed project so I needed to cut a few more triangle pieces and while I was here I thought that I would just go ahead and show you some of my progress I will tell you that stitching all of this together is going to be very time consuming when you stitch the triangles together I highly recommend that you press your seams open now because I don't have all of the extra large size half square triangles hanging over and because I cut my end pieces to fit I don't have to do any trimming here the only dog ear that I'm cutting is this dog ear here off of my half triangle that I cut 3 8 of an inch larger and then that's all the trimming that I need to do all of my remaining dog ears will stay in the quilt so let me show you the back of a couple rows that I have pieced together and when I get ready to sew these together I'm actually using these dog ears to line up so I want to line this dog ear up with this dog ear down here and then you want to line up your dog ears all the way throughout the quilt 
And what I do is I tend to pin right along the side of the seam and then I just take that pin out when I get to it. So I line up my dog ear and I'll put a pin through the diagonal seam and then when I get to that I can pull it out. And I do that all the way down. So I highly recommend that you pin. And then once I get through stitching this block together, we still need to add our stem. So I will come back with that. I'm back with my completed block. And I am missing a point here somehow. I don't know how that happened. But that's the only point that I'm missing. But I'm just going to continue and proceed forward. The last task I needed to do was have some strips for my stems and one gets added here and then the other gets added there so they asked for the stem sizes and I just cut mine a couple inches larger so when I ran it through my bias tape maker that I was able to have it larger so now I can cut them to size so I will go ahead and cut these to size. I will add these stems on here by flipping my top edge down and placing it in the corner. And then I will iron that down. And then I'm going to hand stitch these onto the background block. So I have to do some hand stitching on this block and the other block. And then I will come back with both completed blocks. I'm back with my completed blocks and I will add photos at the end but I thought that I would just show you the block before the end of the video and then here is my second block and this block did need to be squared up it is not the finished size as it should be in your quilt top so please read the instructions on this because this block will need to be squared up and this block did take a lot of time to piece. So this block is very time consuming. It's very deceiving. But I like both of them. And I will end the video here. I'll say thank you for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. Thank you.